going on? Good evening. Uh, welcome to Math and Engineering Help Desk. Uh, this video here is a uh, assistant video for Lesson 7 on the uh, uh, Grade 8 uh, Illustrative Mathematics Curriculum. And this particular uh, video is being made uh, in response to uh, a student of mine who had uh, requested a little bit of assistance with uh, with this, this homework assignment uh, that they have for tonight. So I'm going to uh, give some tips and tricks that you can use. I'm not going to be giving answers. Uh, if you're looking for answers, sorry, not going to get them. Um, however, I will certainly, I'm hope, certainly hoping that I will be able to show you how you would be obtaining the answers and interpreting the problems that you need. So um, this is a four problem set. So we're going to go through all four problems and we're going to go and see what we do. All right. So number one is actually a review problem, although it's, it's a relevant review because you're doing linear, uh, linear uh, expressions, linear functions, and uh, linear relationships at this point, it's still it's still a good reminder about proportional relationships and how to use them. So in this problem, you have two different recipes. This is very similar. I actually had my kids do posters for uh, for this this lesson, uh, and they came out wonderful. And uh, they they're very I'm very pleased with how they how they worked how hard they worked on them. But anyway, I digress. Um, you have two different recipes. One recipe is shown here uh, as a relationship from sugar to flour based on the banana cakes. And you have, I said banana bread. And then you have another one for a recipe that has a relationship that's written as a uh, as a proportional uh, equation. So y equals 7 fourths x is one. And then meanwhile here you have basically pairs of sugar and flour that work um, for this recipe. So what you're supposed to do here is you're supposed to figure out ultimately if you use four cups of sugar, how much flour do you need for each one? So the best way to do this and come up with uh, come up with that number is to recognize what the constant of proportionality is for each of these scenarios. So the constant of proportionality is basically what is y changing by for every unit of x. So if you look at 7 fourths right here, this is the easy one. That right there is your constant of proportionality. The number that's in front of x is the constant of proportionality because all Proportional relationships are in the format of y equals kx or y equals mx. Um, either of those two would be would be relevant here. So the number here, seven fourths, would be your rate of change of your y compared to x. Seven every every seven y's uh, would be over four x. That's how that works. Now over here you have a table, but because you know it's a proportional relationship, all you really need to do is divide one of these by the other. So if you take the y, the second second value here, which is your flower, and you divide that by your x, that's going to give you your constant of proportionality, which in turn you would take and put in front of that k. So if you divided these these uh, the flower divided by the sugar and you get a number, you're going to take that number and put that as, as, as your k here times x. So if you ended up with 3, you'd get y equals 3x. If you ended up with 10, it'd be y equals 10x. For this uh, for this particular one here, 3 quarters would be your flour, 1 half would be your sugar, or you can use 4 and a half for your flour and 3 for your sugar. Either way, you will get the same constant of proportionality. Now, once you do that, let's say, and I'm, again, I'm not giving you answers here, but let's say that you get an equation here that's y equals um, 3x. Okay, we'll use 3x as a nice one, right? So this means that you would do three times your x to get your y, three times the amount of sugar you have to get the amount of flour that you need. So if you're going to use four cups of sugar, three times four would be 12. So you would use 12 cups of flour. Now, is that the answer to this question? Again, no, it's not, because the cost of proportionality is not three. I was just using that as an example. So you would take whatever you get there, and that's how you do that. And then for this recipe over here, four times seven fourths would be how you would get the cup of sugar a uh, cup of flour, excuse me, for that. Uh, number two, what's the constant of proportionality mean for each situation? And what is it? What is the constant of proportionality and what does it mean? Well, I've already identified one of them for you. Seven fourths is the constant of proportionality for this recipe. And what does it mean? Well, since all constants of proportionality are what your y unit is over your x unit, the interpretation here would be flour or cups of flour, flour over uh, or per cup of sugar, right? That's what you would, that's, that's how that means. So if you read this seven fourths, this means seven fourths cups of flour per cup of sugar. So anytime you have a unit rate, you're going to be using that relationship, that Y unit over that X unit. And that would be how you would interpret that. Okay. So that kind of means that. And then again, what is the cost proportionality? The value here, seven fourths is one half of that answer. The other half would be what you get from these two. Okay. So that's problem one.
Problem two is a review on your uh, geometry, dilations and rotations, uh, reflections, translations, etc., that you would perform to get this shape on the left to the shape on the right. So uh, one easy way to describe this, and, and there's lots of actual actual answers for this particular problem, is you can you re you could realize that this particular shape obviously is similar to this shape because you're a told that they're similar, but also that you're making a transformation to get from this to this. So of course, they're going to be similar. Uh, what you're going to do here is the best way to do this is most likely to reflect this point so that this figure will turn over and then dilate it from this point A. So that way everything stretches out into that. That's you know the best way to do that. Just write that up uh, nicely. Not exactly as I said, but that's pretty much it. Okay. So with number three, this one here is, is new stuff. Now what you have to do here is you have to write and generate three linear relationships with different y-intercepts and using the slopes that you're provided and then take the equation. So I'll do one of these for you so you can get an idea of what you're supposed to do. I'll use my line tool and I have to make one that's got a slope of one fifth. So let's say I'm going to pick a y-intercept. I'm going to say the y-intercept here is going to be three, right? So I'll use this point here as my starting value. If it's going to be one fifth, that means that for every y that goes up one, x is going to go over five. So that means if I go up one, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five over. And every time I would do that, I'm just going to extend this all the way through the grid, right? So that's one, two, three, four, five right there. Okay. So there's my line. That would be my uh, slope of one fifth. Now, once you get that line onto your grid, the last thing you need to do is write the equation for that line. So since the slope is already given to us and remember all of the equations are in the same format, in this case, y equals mx plus b. So all you need to do is identify what slope you're using, which I just used one fifth, and where is the y-intercept that you just used. So for this particular equation, this line, excuse me, this line is y equals one fifth of x plus three. Okay. And that would be, that would be all you need to do. Okay. So obviously here you have the, um, I just want to see if I can rotate this, but I'm not going to trouble myself with that. Um, here it is. There we go. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. So once you identify where your y-intercept is, you just got to make that your B, okay? And then use the slope. So when you do three-fifths, you're going to go up three and over five. When you do six-fifths, you're going to go up six and over five. Just use a different y-intercept each time, okay? So the next line you pick will have a higher slope, and the next line you pick will have a higher, a higher slope and also a higher y-intercept. Or if you go down here, whichever, obviously, it's completely up to you how you choose to do that. But there's one for you right there, okay? So the last problem in the set, problem four, is a word problem with the graph. The graph here shows the height in inches h of a bamboo plant two months after it has been planted. Um, bamboo grows really, really quickly, uh, and I know this because in my backyard, the uh, neighbors behind us planted this huge bunch of bamboo, and it towers over the entire uh, their house, it hides their house, and towers over everything that we can see in the back. It's kind of ridiculous, but anyway, I digress. Uh, the graph shows the height in inches of bamboo plant two months after it has been planted. So what we're going to do is we're going to write an equation, okay? Write an equation that describes the relationship between h and t. So that's super easy. Where's the y-intercept? So the y-intercept here looks like it's about 12. And the slope of this line, what is that slope? So if I start here at 1, 15, that's a point I can use. And then if I find another point, here's another point right here. That's a good one. That's 6, 30. So if I use my slope formula here, that's going to be 30 minus 15 on the top. And that will be over... Um, 6 minus 1, right? So that's my slope formula for that. So let me just kind of, you know, draw my bar here. I'm using a touchpad today, so it's not as good for the, for the mouse. That's okay. So that's going to be 30 minus 15 over 6 minus 1. That's 15 over 5, which means that the slope of this is 3, okay? So that equals 3 for the slope here. Now, if that's the slope, the y-intercept is 12. So that right there should be enough information for you to write the equation in the format of y equals mx plus b. I already mentioned both the m and the b. So your job is to take what, I, what you heard and put it into this format. Put your m for your slope and your b for your y-intercept. And the next question or last question in this homework is how many months will the how many after how many months will a bamboo plant be 66 inches tall? Okay. Now this for you this is for you to see if a little bit of extra if you can figure this out. Okay. If it's going to be 66 inches tall, are you plugging in for h or are you plugging in for t? Okay. You're given a height, so you're going to be plugging in a y, which means that whatever you wrote for your equation, you've got to make it equal 
66. Okay, so for example, if the equation, which uh, if the equation was say 2x equals 66, 2x plus 2 equals 66, which it's not, I'm just showing it, right? What you would do here is you'd have to solve for x. So you'd have to subtract 2, that'd be 64, and then you have to divide by 2, that would be 32. So if that was what, if that was your equation, you would solve that and get x equals 32. You're going to do kind of the same thing here, right? You'll have an equation. You're going to have to plug in 66 for y, and you're going to have to move over a number and divide by another number to get the x by itself. Okay. The other alternative, of course, is if you recognize that it's three inches uh, every it's three inches every month, then you can just make a table of values or use some reasoning skills to get up to that as well. If you don't want to solve it, it certainly is a way to make a table of values or just keep using patterns to get the next value. Totally okay. However, the equation method definitely the fastest. Anyway, I hope this video helped you. I hope that it helps you understand your homework. Uh, if uh, oh, that battery's running low, I guess I better plug in. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, a wonderful evening. We'll see you in class tomorrow. Don't forget to be awesome.